Yeah. So it's 637. Uh, Montserrat, it did a great job on the minutes. They were long and involved. <laughs> there was a lot kind of going on last time. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments about the minutes? I just regret I missed the meeting. Yeah, it was a good one. It happens. Mm -hmm. All of us, right? Um, anyone want to make a motion to accept the minutes? I'll make I move that we accept the minutes. Great. Seven. Great. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Yep. Great. Aye. Automatic. Okay. The minutes are approved. Um, the first item up is the HPP quick update. I think at least Brad Barron got this message. Maybe you Brant to Brant over the last couple of weeks. Um, the state has just approved the housing production plan for the town of Waitley. So it's official. Um, so I think it's great. I sent Megan a thank you and congratulations email. It's probably her third or fourth HPP that she's done. So it feels good to be um, sort of joining the club. I know a lot of the eastern part of the state's been doing this for a long time. Um, I hope it gives and, us... Some and we've been talking about doing it for years. Yeah, right. Even though not a lot of communities out here of our size have managed to get here, I think it's fantastic. Um, and I hope, you know, again, after all the other funding things, it's a little discouraging at the moment, but I'll talk more about that. Um, keep my hopes up um, with some lobbying. Um, so then- well, is, it, uh, is a copy of the plan on our website somewhere? It's not yet, but I think that would be a great thing to do. Um, Under the housing section or, or general? I'm not really sure because I don't think, I know that they're making some changes to the website. I might check in with Brian about his thoughts on that. That's a good question, Fred. Um, yeah, their, their thoughts about updating the website. I don't know that anything has started on that. Yeah. Right. I had the impression that that was the case. And because of that, maybe putting it more on the front page instead of back in any of the sort of sub pages is, is maybe um, more prudent. Um, the housing committee does have a page, right? <sighs> I don't think it's fully. Um, I'm not. I'm not. What do I have open? Anything there good? is a housing committee page. I'm not sure there's much on it. Well, there's, is there a little? Yeah, there's a fair okay. amount. And I believe, I mean, I know I was recently granted editor access to the town website. So oh. Things related to the planning board. Okay. And uh, that might extend... But it could be that we just add to the little uh, green box. There's something about a Waitley Housing Trust fact sheet. And I bet we could um, upload the document and add a link to the housing production plan. Right there. Right there. Super. So do you want to just do that? I can, I can certainly try. Okay. That would be super. And if it doesn't work, Brian, it's totally fine. Right. I'll go through the channels and talk to Brian about his yeah, thoughts. It'll, it'll be good it's, if it's already there, because when the website gets upgraded, at least it's something that can be carried over. That's that right. You have to remember to put it in new. Right, right, right. So, well, and I wouldn't have minded having Brian blast it to the front for, you know, a month or whatever. Every so often, new things sort of pop up on the front page and go away, right? But um, anyway. So while I'm do, if I, uh, if you, uh, uh, Catherine, if you yep. enable screen sharing for me. Yes, I will do that. Because um, I want to show you guys what's currently on the page. Oh, um, sure. Thank you. You should be I, all set. Because if I go in, let me share this one. So, I mean, this is what our page looks like. So we've got some contact information. And Catherine, if you want me to change any text here, I can do that. But um, what I was thinking of is right here in this 
green box above contact information. Oh, yeah. I'll add, a link. I'll add a link to the housing production plan. And then I can also update committee members because I'm not sure all these names. I don't know about Eli, Natalie. Right. Yep. Neither of them have been to a meeting as far as I can remember. Okay. So they they continue to be listed as members? Yeah, I, I don't those think people, those are the people that Hannah brought in. Okay. And I don't think that either of them have been no, active they're, or they're even both, sworn in. They're both out. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I'll remove Eli and Natalie. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Very good. So that's what I'll I'll let you I'll let you know if I'm successful. Great. And I'll take a look now that it is there at that the those bullet points. Um yeah, because I didn't realize. So maybe they have been doing some things behind the scenes, Fred. And I don't I don't know. And I know Sylvie asked me at one point um to give her a list of links to forward for when they do get started, which right. I haven't finished yet because I need help, but okay, good. So is if we're gonna advertise the housing production plan on the website somewhere, is it a good time to also ask for new members? And I think we're short a couple of members, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, we, let's, yeah, let's talk about that at the end of the meeting. Um, Brant and I um, had a conversation about something that we might try to work on over the next couple of months. And that might be an, actually a time to put feelers out for on a more formal basis for new members. Um, I think that was really what I was thinking of for the next agenda item, even though I realize it's really saying we'd more talk about the actual HPP zoning strategies the strategy that you and I discussed wasn't exactly in relation to the table that we've been talking about so many times, but I'd love it if you'd um, just give a little synopsis of our last chat. Sure, sure, okay. So, um, so there have been a bunch of changes on the planning board and more to come um, that are getting a little entangled with what the plant, the planning board's ability to, in the short term to support the work of the housing committee. So you may know that uh, the longtime chair of the planning board, Don Sluter, um, he had a wonderful positive life event, though it meant that he remarried and moved out of Waitley and, and thus stepped down, resigned from all of his roles. So he was he's no longer chair of the planning board. I was elected chair of the planning board at the planning board's meeting in late October. So, so I'm new in that role. Um, Tom Litwin has just resigned. Uh, so, so right now, and then we brought on a new planning board member, namely JD Ross. We're kind of excited about adding JD to the planning board because he brings a lot of experience as a developer, uh, and a and a and he, it turns out when I was interviewing JD uh, in response to his indication of interest to be a member of the planning board, one of the things that came up in that interview was that he was very interested in how, uh, housing affordability, affordable housing. He was thinking it through the lens of his mother who lives in Waitley and would like to be able to downsize and stay affordably within the town. Um, and he had a number of thoughts we didn't explore in great detail, but he indicated interest in working on this issue. So of course I was pretty excited about that. But the, the point is uh, right now, the, the planning board has uh, only four out of five members. So I'm the chair. Judy Markland is still on the planning board. Sarah Cooper is on the planning board and JD Ross is on the planning board. So, and we have a couple of leads 
to fill the seat that Tom Litwin is vacating to get us back up to our complement of five. Though we have- If I can interrupt though, I talked to Judy. I think she does not intend to continue after her current term. He does not, that's true too, yes. Her term ends in June of 2024. So thank you, uh, thank you, Fred. So, but that further underscores the fact that the planning board is after perhaps quite a few years of stability is now undergoing sort of major turnover uh, with some more to come. So JD's new, we're gonna fill a new position. And then when Judy leaves, there'll be you know yet another new body on the planning board. So it just creates challenges in general for the, when we have so many new people on the board to just get things done, right? Help new people come up to speed. But we were, the board has been talking usually dedicating 15, 20 minutes at all of our, each of our meetings to just talk about HPP related priorities and so forth. I think we have on the planning board side kind of also put or deprioritized the whole bylaw changes related to accessory dwelling units. I think the feedback that we've heard from the building inspector suggesting that there are not that many ADUs in town and there doesn't seem to be strong appetite to build more, the planning board felt like on the one hand, we could inform by the HPP, go ahead and tweak the ADU provisions in the bylaws and maybe that would give us the feeling that we did something but I think there's a sentiment on the board that making changes to bylaws of any kind is a lot of work. It's a little fraught when it comes before voters at town meeting. And we really don't want to be wasting time on bylaw revisions that are not, that we don't feel confident are going to significantly move the needle in Waitley when it comes to affordable housing. Well, you know, big A and little a affordable housing. Now in the most recent meeting, so we had our first, so at the end of November, November 29th, the planning board met. This was the first meeting where I was chair from the beginning. JD was brand new on the board. Uh, and we did talk about housing production and, and it was very interesting that uh, JD articulated the point of view that he felt Waitley, the way to go for affordable housing is in, in terms of multifamily, multifamily units, two family units. And he felt that Waitley zoning bylaws were way too restrictive and really created an impediment for multifamily housing in Waitley. Now, again, I'm not advocating it here tonight. Right now, I'm just sharing with all of you some discussion that came up at the planning board's November 29th meeting where JD was brand new on the board. He again indicated he was interested in the subject. He articulated this view. He concurred with the idea that ADUs were probably not going to make a big difference in Waitley. And if we made changes to our bylaws to enable more ADUs that he just didn't see that happening. Septic systems being a problem and just general costs of housing. So he was advocating for changes related to multifamily housing. And I think this group may know there are recommendations in the HPP related to multifamily housing that you know we kind of deprioritize thinking that multifamily was not going to go over very well or that that Waitley residents might be more um, I don't know 
dispositionally opposed to expanding multifamily housing in Waitley. Uh, you know, based on what our own particular points of view, I don't know, but we thought that maybe ADUs at the, when we were discussing it might be of higher priority. So now here we have a developer on the board saying that if, you know, that he would recommend focusing energy on increasing the support in our bylaws for multifamily. It's interesting. So this led to further discussion. And we had, we don't have any concrete ideas or proposals. I would share with this group tonight that um, my, my sense of the, the board was one of receptivity to what JD was saying. Right? So that I sort of, again, nothing is, uh, you know, we're not talking yet about anything concrete, but it seemed like we started a talk as a board about what that might entail to what, how we might go about looking at our bylaws and trying to improve their, improve incentives for multifamily housing or remove obstacles, whatever they may be. We, it wasn't, we didn't have a very concrete focused discussion. So where we ended up was uh, some homework that I need to follow up with JD about. I wanted JD to look at the bylaws to see what, if he started to have some concrete recommendations. Uh, and two, what we did talk about was that maybe it would be helpful as a, maybe either just as the planning board or just as a housing committee or even better as a joint activity of the housing committee and planning board, if we were able to organize and sponsor one or more community forums where developers were invited. And so this is a very, I wouldn't even go so far as to call it as a half-baked idea. This is just like we started a say, well, what if we invited developers to, uh, to tell us, give us their points of view, like what do they see are the obstacles to them developing big A and little a affordable housing in Waitley? Uh, I think the planning board again felt that as citizens, we don't necessarily have strong, well-informed judgments about what kind of bylaw changes would really make a difference. And so perhaps if we could get developers to share their points of view, which we could ignore, we could listen to, um, but this seemed like the kernel of a good idea that, and JD indicated willingness and interest in helping us make connections, and what would be in it for the developers? Well, the, what's in it for the developers is that if they inform the town and the town makes changes that make it more appealing for them to come into town and develop multifamily units, um, yeah, it would really be they would have the opportunity to do what they do, which is develop. If our bylaws are keeping them out, then, and there are changes that the citizens of Waitley are open to voting for, then that could create opportunities for new development in line with recommendations of the HPP. There's one other complicating or opportunity thing coming up, and that is over the next couple of years, will be starting on a master plan update and housing will have to fit into that. Right. So it's a question of, you know, we, how, we how talked much about... housing, how liberal do you want the rules to get, you know, to create affordable housing or to create housing in general? Right. And I think yeah. that, that will go into the master plan update considerations. Yep. Yeah. 
Say, Brent, I'm not sure that JD knows uh, what some of the current issues that we're going through in town for <clears throat> for housing, uh, especially on ZBA. No alternate member of ZBA. And I, right now, this week, we have two public hearings on PU units being proposed. There are some issues with uh, meeting our, our requirements, <clears throat> not so much the size, but the legality of the lots and all that. So we have two going on right now. Within the last six months, we've had two or three other ones being proposed that ZBA has turned down because they didn't meet the guidelines. So for ZBA, that, that's a major emphasis right now is these AD units being being proposed. Uh, so, so it's really interesting to hear. It, it It's sad that I hear this because it just reminds me how siloed <laughs> Our different boards and committees. Right. Are. You know, I had no idea that any like neither did I. Right. No mechanism where word would reach from the ZBA to the planning board. Like, hey, there are all of these ADU things. Like, I guess the only way is that we would have to be having somebody from the planning board attend all the ZBA meetings or something like that. But it's interesting to hear you say that, Fred. What do you have a sense of what the like? Is it the overall footprint or? It's No, it's not the footprint. It's, it seems to be more the, the ownership of the property. When, when was it uh, some of these were subdivided and now they want to put an ADU on uh, or make it a flag lot for an ADU and the bylaws aren't clear. One, we've asked our attorney for interpretation that will be discussed this week sometime. I don't know what he's saying, but there's, there's some disagreement there. It's not the size or uh, maybe the, the location. It's just meeting the the uh, boundary legal deed requirements, I guess, of it. That's okay. what the issues have been. And yeah. I don't know how planning would, how you would change the bylaw to address some of that. Some of them are clear what is required and others are kind of fuzzy. And that's why we asked our uh, our town council, I guess, for an opinion on it. Yeah. But, uh... yeah. And Brent, when I was on planning, I remember we all had a couple of different issues with people coming in, and it was very unclear what the sequence of approvals had to be. You know, who you had to go to first, and then, and it's not clear anywhere. Okay. Uh, what what the procedures are for getting a project moving. So you've got conservation, you've got planning, you've got zoning. Right. Sometimes you get the select board has to be involved. And it's not at all clear right. what the procedures and sequences. That, that seems like um, a really important thing to clarify for everyone involved. What, yeah. is the, yeah. um, what is the order of approvals for projects? And I think it, it may depend on the individual project also. You know, there may be, you know, like Fred was talking about a flag lot. It may involve if you don't get zoning, you know, board of appeals approval, nothing else matters. You know, that your lot simply would not be adequate, and there are other things that may be you had to get a site plan approval first yeah. before you can consider other, you know, getting a special permit or, or something. So I don't I don't think it's a one size fit, fits all procedure, but. On a lot of projects, there is a ambiguity as to what the procedures are. Right, so and there, a lot of times the building, the bill that we hear from ZBA here is from a building inspector, or the applicant saying a building inspector right. told me to go back to ZBA and ask for approval because he didn't think it met the bylaw requirements. Well, yeah. So this is another like a tangent because Juliana. Mm -hmm. And Brian and I are working on getting a meeting with the building inspector and the building ins and and Bob Dean. I forget what his role is relative to the building inspector. He he's sort of the coordinator um, for, with FERC. Uh, yeah. For, yeah. The all the fee for service programs. For all the yeah. fee for service. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the the main focus of that planned meeting is on clarifying the process. Because indeed, uh, it's very clear that the planning board, for example, has no legal authority to determine whether something needs site review or not. You know, 
the way it's supposed to work is that if somebody with a project uh, has developed plans, they work with the building inspector as their, so the ideal process we think is one where any of these projects, whether ADUs or what was going on with nurse farms, they have to start with the building inspector. And then the building inspector has to be the driver of the process. The building inspector has to make the determinations of what's required. So the building inspector has to determine whether something requires a special permit and thus needs to go before the ZBA, or whether there is some non-conformance or a variance must be sought, which again means that something would have to go to the ZBA. It's the building inspector who has to determine whether a project needs to undergo site plan review. So, and right now it is a, it is a very ambiguous process and it's been opaque and it's been causing problems. Could you, could you just say again, um, this is a meeting that's coming up? It is, is a right? meeting that's, we're in the process of being scheduled. Okay, and it's, and it's a meeting that will be organized by the planning board? No, this is a meeting that's being organized, driven by Brian Domino and Juliana Wagner. So oh. Juliana, is, I think, has an interest in this from the select board's point of view. Mm -hmm. I have an interest as the chair of the planning board. So the three of us, Brian, me, and Juliana, are in the process of setting up a meeting with Bob Dean and Jim Hawkins regarding process issues okay all right now i'm still i guess um fred is it it's still roger who's the chair of the zba or has deb been doing that work for now? well he's uh uh deborah carney's acting chair i don't think roger's back yet as full-time chair okay yeah. so maybe i'll reach out to deb just to see if she has a perspective on what are the issues that are cropping up on the ZBA front with ADUs. Because if there are issues that, you know, if, if people are getting turned down for ADUs, potentially you might say wrongly, I don't mean the ZBA is not doing its job, but if the ZBA is following the bylaws and turning down ADU projects where maybe there's a different judgment as to whether the bylaw should actually be changed so those projects could in fact go forward, it would be good to know that. Right. And you know the, the, other, the other thing that could be driving this uh, committee that Brian is organizing is, you know, our, our, our I guess, most, uh, I don't know, controversial or our opportune project coming up is the uh, uh, I-91 Exit 35 study that's right. going on. And there's there's nothing, nothing definitive yet come out of that study. We're still looking at various options and it involves some, some planning issues, some uh, <clears throat> zoning issues, uh, wetlands issues and all that. And, and I think once the, the study is done. It comes down to how do all the issues get coordinated and who's responsible for it? I, I think that could be why Brian is so involved in it right now is to, once that study is done, how do we proceed? Who do people go to? Who developers? Who do developers go to? Do they go to planning board to ask if it meets criteria? Or do they go to conservation commission and say, no, you're in a wetland, you can't do it? Or you go to ZBA because you want to vary in the lot dimensions or something. Uh, who's controlling that? Yeah, yeah. My personal opinion is I don't. I want everybody to go to the to the building inspector as their first stop, and that the building inspector determines what happens next and what approvals are needed. That can my I ask plan. one more question about that that meeting? Is is that specifically about um, ADUs or is it broader? No, it is just about process. General process. Okay, general process for any project. For any project. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So separately, I need to, you know, find out from the ZBA about all this ADU related 
activity. You know, because that may test the hypothesis of whether changes to ADU bylaws are actually worthwhile. Right now, Fred, you've surprised me by giving me the impression that there's more appetite for building ADUs than I had been led to believe, and that ADU projects are being turned down. And right. again, if they're being turned down for the right reasons and no changes are needed, that's one thing. But if they're being, but if, but if they're not being turned, if they're not being turned down for the right reasons, yeah, or the or the, the reasons why they're being turned down need to be taken away, then we ought to look at that. Right. But meanwhile, if the bylaws are too restrictive. If they're being turned down because the bylaws are too restrictive. So maybe some simplification. Or more restrictive than we yeah. would want, then we have to consider the bylaws. Yep. Yes, that's right. And yeah, and that's what I would like to know. And, and I, sort of making this go full circle while not exactly related, but that kind of goes back to this idea of a public forum right. that's talking about these types of issues, having a developer or maybe a group of developers who are willing to come and have like maybe a somewhat structured meeting where we go through some of these types of issues in trying to get more housing development that is is for houses le costing less than at least $750,000 or something, you know, right. get, getting new houses in sort of a middle income market or lower um, built in town. Uh, so I'm hopeful that um, we can get, have a couple of discussions about that and get it sort of a little bit more baked, I guess, that idea, right? Yeah. I want, um, you know, and and like maybe that. join it with a kickoff meeting for the master, the housing part of the master plan or get Megan involved in some way so that any feedback from that discussion can sort of be in her ear as she's you know moving forward with some of the other processes for that yeah right now the master plan is being contemplated but as far as i know there's nothing moving immediately on it no, we i could say we we did have a developers involved in, in the one one committee that we had on the center school the center school visioning committee must have had uh, eight or ten members from from the town or some adjoining towns and and a couple of developers did attend the meeting. Uh, they didn't say a whole lot because they didn't want to put their cards on the table. What they were promoting, what were they interested in, yeah. and what could the committee adopt that would favor the developers? They they they're very quiet. They're just in the background observing. So I I, I don't know that kind of group of developers. You, you may not get any response at all because no. We, we may find out on Wednesday because that's when the RFP responses are due for the center school. Right, but, uh, but to get them to participate is, is difficult sometimes. I totally hear you, Fred, and I don't disagree necessarily at all. I'm really like, you know, when I think about it just through the, le through the lens of now I'm chair of the planning board. So what am I gonna advocate for? We, we were talking at the planning board about how there's this open space cluster development bylaw in our zoning bylaws that was apparently went through a lot of labor and effort to, to create that, craft that particular bylaw, get it passed and added to the zoning bylaws. It's never been used. Right. And that stuff, you know, that sucks. Like, why spend all of that effort? There's clearly some idea like this was going, this was going to create opportunities for development, but apparently it didn't. Now, maybe it needs to be changed or tweaked. Judy had some thoughts about changing some of the, the, you know, incentives or density bonuses. I read through the open space cluster development bylaw. And it is, it is not easy to understand, <laughs> which, you know, there are all of these, there's this point system, it's very complicated. And it, it's not atypical from what other, from what really large cities might have though. 
um, that was what I remembered, but it, that yeah. doesn't mean it's all that useful in, in Waitley, right? Obviously it hasn't yeah. been used, it's been there forever. Yeah. So the point, Fred, is just that I don't wanna waste, you know, volunteer time and the town residents time making changes to bylaws that are gonna not make a difference. So I'm, I'm hoping, and I, this, I, this whole idea may fall flat for reasons that you're, you point out, like maybe developers don't really wanna come and join a conversation like this. Um, but right now, this is like my leading, my leading idea. I've got a new planning board member with connections into the developer community and who's a developer himself. And so I'm going to at least push this idea a little bit further and see if it can gain some traction. What I'm, what I'm seeing in, in, in the area, looking at newspapers and and, uh, and other, other news, it's for the small communities, you see a lot of the ADU issues come up uh, uh, in uh, accessory apartments, uh, college students living and whatever. And at the other side, you, you see these larger complexes with 30, 40, 50 units were being developed and trying to get get uh, funding for it. And I think Catherine has made mention to this before. It's it's the larger ones that Wait, Waitley doesn't qualify for or, or Waitley doesn't maybe need or see the vision for. It's the smaller units that, that, that you see a, a problem. For a multi-unit, multi-development, uh, house or project, I, I think it's cut and dry. The building inspector approves a two-family house. I, I mean, I, I think we need to get beyond them, the two-family house and, and look at, at something between that and uh, the major developers. I think other, other towns, Catherine will say about that, other towns are struggling with the same issue as it's EDUs or, or you don't get anything, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know that our bylaws make it as simple as you just get the building inspector's approval for a two-family house in Waitley. That's happening. It's been happening uh, over time. Sometimes they, they loosen the restrictions, but... So other towns have started passing some small changes, right? So I right. think possibly it was South Deerfield that I had seen over the last couple of months that maybe made either two family houses or ADUs by right. Um, and a couple of other towns, South Hadley, I think with, there was an article in the paper. So that type of change is definitely happening with more regularity around here. I think we've all seen some of that. We're trying, what Brant is trying to say is what of the actual efforts of these different zoning committees is is actually creating new housing units that are little a affordable or maybe even big a affordable in any of these towns and so um i think putting a little more time and effort in in a very small group of us to try to have an open forum like get to a point where maybe we can get some of these discussions happening in a public forum might help us decide what in Waitley might make some sense in terms of making changes. The one, the one that's going on right now that you could ask that developer to come to your meeting, I don't know how receptive he is, is, is for the blue school over there. You know, yeah. he's, he's only doing half of what was proposed. Uh, what's gonna happen with the other half? Is is he really interested or is it just uh, yeah. waiting for funding or whatever? But I mean, there you've got an active developer working in town. Right, right. I keep driving past it. It seems like nothing is happening there at the Blue School. Not outside. Inside, there's there's nothing, not much left other than supporting walls. That's it. Hmm. But That's Bill or Bob O'Bear, yeah, right? It's one of the right. O'Bears. Bob O'Bear. Yeah. Bob, yeah. He may even propose for the center school. I, I, I don't know. I, I've heard a rumor that he will be proposing for the center school. We don't have anything back in hand yeah. yet. We don't. There are. Are there any proposals received, Fred? As far as you know, not that I've heard. I haven't talked yeah. to Brian. Two days, days till the deadline. That's. The, so 
it's a long time. Two days early is a lot in these kind of worlds. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm excited about trying to move this idea forward and trying to have something happen. It gets a little complicated by the fact that in conjunction with the big housing bond bill, the governor sort of released some zoning requirements on larger cities. And who knows, um, I was at a CHAPA meeting today where they discussed um, a number of sort of legislative ways that people can sort of pick at that legislation and try to to lobby for one thing or another. I was there because I'd like to try to work on some kind of set aside for towns under 5,000 people. Um, there were a couple other people interested in that as well. So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna connect with other Franklin County people and push that forward a little. Um, but who knows, like someone could push a zoning change that is mandated for the whole state through that. I doubt that would happen. I don't think, um, I think the governor's probably pretty reasonable about this stuff. And she's just trying to like set the stage for housing to become easier where it's manageable. I, I don't, I don't think she's going to try to do anything unilaterally like that, but um, it, there's always outside forces, I guess. That's all. That could no, I don't think the governor will, but I think the, the, the governor, at least the administration's interested in pushing or letting rural communities do more. And that's even, right. Right. Giving more resources and flexibility. But if they don't create resources, I don't know how yeah. they can create, like right now, there's zero for resources. But at, for least, at least there's some consideration of rural areas that there wasn't before. That's right. That's right. It is a step forward. A very small right. step looking at the last 25 Catherine, years, but whatever. <laughs> what did you say the governor released? The, the housing group. bond bill. There are, there's some legislation um, attached to the housing bond bill um, okay. with respect to some zoning changes um, that I wouldn't be able to recite now. Okay. I looked, like I what I what stuck out to me, Catherine, and what you sent around was, and I think this is draft legislation, right? I mean, this is something that that's right. It's still in draft form. Between now and like June or something, it will be in draft form. So I saw something about how this housing bond bill might make um, might allow might change the zoning act. So I'm trying to be very clear for for Monty. So there looked like there's a provision that would involve changing the zoning act such that accessory dwelling units would be allowed by right. What does allowed by right mean? Means that you don't require a spec, it doesn't require a special permit. It still has to conform to zoning dimensional requirements and other things like that, but basically allowed by right means you don't need a special permit or approval as long as you follow the, you conform to the, the guidelines. Right. And that may or may not be for all communities in Massachusetts. It might only be for communities within a certain distance of the MBTA or something, um, which obviously would not be us. But um, it, it, there have been changes of, to the legislation are still being discussed. Um, I'm, I'm not sure in that housing bond bill update item there, that I really had that much more to say about that other than this meeting that I attended today um, was a little over two hours and the focus on the legislative part as opposed to sort of summarizing all the different issues, the different financial pieces and whether they go to public housing or private housing or nonprofit housing it was only like a 10 or 15 minute window. But most of the people on the call were really interested in the, the smaller communities and the fact that there weren't any specific funding sources that smaller communities might be eligible for. And so it sounds like there's still a lot of talk around getting some tweaking to that and we'll see. Um, as, as I think I said last month, I think working with someone at, at FERCOG 
um, to help get those of us with a little bandwidth for this um, together to do a little lobbying is is the path I'll pursue and I'll just keep you guys updated. Um, is there anything else that anyone wanted to talk about, Grant? Did we kind of cover? Yeah, I, like I think we, we did. did. Yeah. I, um, I was just curious from the minutes. Yes. Um, of the last meeting. Um, this thing about the two neglected lots on LaSalle Drive. Yes. Could, I'm, I, I've lost the bubble on that. Could someone remind me, like, like, what are these lots? Who owns them? Like, is there is there really any opportunity there? Um, I don't remember the name of the homeowner. There's a blighted home that's barely standing that has a lovely old 60s VW bus also barely standing that's been entirely encroached by trees and shrubs and whatever and um at last I remember they were current on their taxes but there'd been a number of deaths in the family and I'm not sure if people knew who was paying the taxes but I think we got to the point where it might be worth reaching out to them um some there is some funding available for getting a site that the town might have custody of if in fact we could buy this for example from these people um if i can interrupt so if i remember funding. correctly mm -hmm. it's a couple in northampton and now owns it okay that had inherited it from a parent and uncle they Both properties the, or just one? This is this is just the one. Just one. Okay. The uh it's the first undeveloped property on the right as you go down the south drive. Right. There's a there's a house Correct. on the corner, and this one is yep. the one next door. That's right. With with the vine from the VW bus. The That's corner. right. The collapsed ranch house right. in behind um, it somewhere. Yep. Several years ago, we tried to get in touch with the owners and either got no response or got a we'll get back to you when they never did or something um they don't seem to be doing anything with the property there doesn't seem to be any interest in their developing it but they pay the taxes and they also haven't shown any interest in it making it available for affordable housing but it is a building lot it is a what should be condemned property um right. another contact attempted contact would probably be worthwhile but yeah it, it wasn't lack of effort on our part they just we it was a lack of responsiveness off. yeah but i think the 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 more i don't know developable parcels on that road are are further south of that Yes, the, yeah, I was going to get to the, that next, or Catherine was. Yes, right. The 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 person on that corner, yeah, owns that house next to it that has fallen down and and isn't assessed very much. But there's there's at least two parcels after that. One's got a, a vacant house that isn't worth much, and there's a garage and building on the other parcel. I think both of them are owned by an individual in Hatfield, and yep. we've had some discussions. I, I guess I know that the individual personally had some discussions with him over the years. Other members in town have had some discussions and he's kind of, uh, I don't know, lukewarm to, to doing anything with, with that property. Uh, as you can see, he's not done anything. Uh, the, the, there says value there is, uh, it has some some value to it, more so in the, in the land in that uh, garage or storage building, I guess, but, uh, there was a proposal, I think, Catherine, a few years ago that uh, Richard and I developed to, to approach to the, owner, the owner of that parcel, but we never got to point to do it because of, I think, COVID and other restrictions. So there was nothing really, really done. Uh, like I say, I, I know that homeowner, and it's a matter of, you know, how do we structure something there or structure a committee there involving, say, the homeowner, the develop a developer, 
and housing authority to produce something like you have in uh, what Sanderson Place in, in Sunderland. You, yeah, you it, it would. There's agent. not enough land to be anywhere near yeah. that size, though. Well, also, if, if I remember correctly, on that there was a problem. He, the owner had a problem water. selling the land because of access to the land further to the south. Well, that's that that's he works the, other... the fields or something to the south, and would need access to it, and it's not readily available if he sells the one property. But well, then... that's that's we... the other it, the other concern is is that an owner of what's there today owns further south of there. You can look at the at the at the assessor's map, and you can see who's the property owners. There is considerable land there, south of there. I bet there's yeah. ways to subdivide to yeah. maybe say yeah. keep most of your farmland, keep the barn, right. keep the open building, right. keep the driveway and the access right. to the fields. Right. Yeah, but then you may run into a frontage problem. Not if we're doing an affordable housing development. Right. True. True. So, right. so I think the first. I'm just gonna. I I think there is some potential for this particular idea, especially over the winter while we're kind of waiting on the demile parcel. Um, I think the first step though is to, if we can't get, um, we can't get ownership of the site that should be condemned. I'm not sure that there's enough land on that more southern parcel to do anything. We would almost need to get both. So I I have a feeling if we do a little work, like you said, Fred B, to to try to reach out, re reach out to the parcel owners of that parcel and say, listen, you know, there's concern in town about your your building, which has now collapsed. I'm not even sure if we got to that point in discussions with them um, because of their lack of responsiveness. So maybe we can can think about um, what's the right way to move forward on that. Um, but I think the biggest challenge would be that other property owner south of there to convince them that to do something and to work with the town. And if you could get that commitment from that property owner, then this other person there could say, well, uh, OK, we'll get rid of our property or how much do you want to give us for our property? Uh, I think rather than that one parcel and what you do there, you need to go to the, to the property owner that's south of there. He's the controlling landowner. Not the part, not the building that's fallen down. So which property? Down. I've sh I'm sharing the assessor's map. Here's thank you, Brant. And which? Okay, now, what the, are we talking about? Lot, south of lot 28. twenty-eight on LaSalle Drive. Yep, this one is, is the falling down with the VW van. That's the right. condemned house. That's, that's the condemned right. house. Go south of there. So this is the, the Watson Stewart estate. Right. That's the, the estate that it's tied up with. Okay. And <laughs> and now, this, if uh, you run it, go a little bit down from that. Right, go south. Well, this there you whole, go. This whole plot right. runs, has frontage on LaSalle, whatever that is. Is that Claverack? It's clever. Yeah. yeah. So this but is a big they, parcel. Yes, but the right. northern part of that above the green hat yes. is pretty much is not buildable. Okay. Because you've got the river running through it. Right. So that's a, all wetland on the north part. Okay. So so and then there are structures down here to the south. That's right. right. 30, 31, see, it's 12 acres, that parcel, that owner. Well, yeah, that could be some right, of the but, fabric. But if you but look, you'll only see the small... problem. The problem is access, because it's a very narrow neck to get down to that. Well, it's That's hard right. to say. It's hard to say from the assessor's map what that is. I, I can kind of explain it because I walk down there yeah. regularly. That first building on the larger lot, the one that's like three different rectangles together. Yeah. Yes, right there. The, the first building is it actually, I think at this point, a, just a slab. And it's the other three separated rectangles that um, are is a home that's fairly dilapidated, in my opinion. Right. And then a barn and a garage are the two more south buildings 
which I think those two more Southern buildings, he would still want access to. We, If we could carve out a corner of that property, like draw a triangle line yeah. and allow him to keep access off the very end of where LaSalle Road, it just um, that, that like diagonal line. Thank you, Brian, I'm like yeah. lost for words on how to describe it. If we could do a triangle line sort of diagonally up from there, possibly that would be all we would need from him along with that lot 28. That's my thought anyway. So um, LaSalle Drive, let me just understand, LaSalle Drive ends right here. Where it my... does, that's right. Correct. Right. Okay. Catherine, what's where the number 31 is? There? Is there a building there or a barn or what? I don't even know because I don't walk back that far. It's a little, um, he's given me permission to go back there, but I don't remember if there's another, I think that box by number 31 is another barn, um, sure. but it's not visible from the road, Yeah, from the end of LaSalle. So so I'm still saying that to develop anything there, you're, you're, there's more property available where it's lot 31 than there is looking at, at lot 28. And well, but there's no access down there, Fred. I don't well, think- you can continue that you can continue the access. I mean, you could get that along extending it hmm. the south there where it ends now i mean that would be part of the project to extend that there is water that goes down there down to that point and then it goes under 91 so there is town water in that area wow i guess i hadn't really thought about um the any idea of extending the road i know that he drives down there with some frequency at, and yeah. um gets onto the parcel and goes drives down to the southern part. So I would assume he farms some of that land. I don't know. He does I, I, without going into it further, Brent, you see the problems with the property. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. There's a lot, there's a lot of issues. There are a lot of issues. Yeah. Yeah. I was just curious. The, the other lot 28, there aren't the issues except that you have an unresponsive owner because it's apparently right. part of a trust that is moribund or right you know, no one's paying well, attention to it you, you also got the terrain issues on lot 28 you don't see it there but at the back edge of that house falling apart it drops off considerably that's yeah. right well you've, you've got wetlands issues through that whole area yeah, yeah through there so okay and and that's part of why i was thinking really that what i was imagining in terms of buildable area would be a series of very small, maybe single story duplexes immediately along LaSalle Drive where it exists now, right. close to the front. Right. And so that leaving all the land behind to be as it is, right? Because you, you wouldn't want to have to do any site work where it, it drops off. Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't even thinking about going down to where all those garage buildings are. Um, It'd be interesting. I hear what you're saying, Fred, about trying to meet with them um, as well, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know which I still think because I think that that parcel 28 would be um, potentially buildable for something small. If we could say we've got that control and all we want is a small piece of his land and we'd be willing to pay for it. It might be an easier sell than just going and talking to him about using a, a part of his land mm. um, without any other adjacent efforts, if you know what I mean? I know I'm not, I'm being pretty clunk, clunky with my words, but. Brian, if you can zoom in a little bit, right where your cursor is or was, You'll see a white area. There's like a slab yep. where there, a barn right. or something used to be. That's right. This. That's there. And yep. I think what Catherine's saying, if you can take, sort of extend lot 28 down to include that, then yep. you might have a, a buildable lot. Uh, yeah, you know, there definitely space. would be enough room right there for another right. small two. Right. But that, that white thing is a currently unused that's concrete right. Slab. That That's right. What had a structure on it? Okay. That's right. Yeah. The, the the other 
I keep thinking of is, you know, rather than the town buying property from that par parcel south there is, is to work a deal with the owner uh, to donate the property. I mean, right now he's paying taxes on it. It's assessed, I forget, a couple hundred thousand. He's paying taxes on it uh, to work a deal where he would still maintain some ownership uh, of the uh, development there in lieu of paying taxes or turning the property over to the town. Uh, some financial arrangement other than the town buying the property from him. Because I guess we can probably buy property elsewhere in town, but I, I think uh, here's an opportunity to do that for that for that property owner. I know he well. You can see he owns property south of there. He also earns property other properties in Hatfield uh, and yeah, Waitley and and Waitley that are not in I would say any more pristine conditions than than there. Uh, and he may be willing just to to uh, get rid of some of some of the properties if he got the right proposal to do it. But I, I think that lot 28 is the more, the better opportunity, just because yeah. the other problems with that lower lot and the access and all the rest make it more difficult to find a place where we're actually going to build. Wasn't but this means we've got to locate and talk to the people who are not responsive. Uh, were we just talking about... Um... Lot 28 plus a little section of lot 31, if possible. Correct. Right. right. But I think getting at least a, you know, enough to move forward on lot 28. There's yes. no reason to even look at the lower lot until we know we've got. Right. Something and to, to work speak with. what you were just saying, Fred, with the different types of deals, you're absolutely right. There could be all kinds of different ways to negotiate that. But again, because we're not looking at a much of his land, I don't think it's worth even talking about that. I don't think it would be worth extending the road. I just I I just yeah. think we need to focus on that parcel 28 first if we can get some contact um and responsiveness out of those property owners, then it would be appropriate to to talk to the owners of 31 about any of those issues. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really don't think it would be great to start with them. So but, Fred, you know the, you have personal contact with the owner of the lot 28? No, no, no. Not 28, lot, 31. I see, 31. Bigger lot. All right. Bigger, bigger lot. And, you know, to, to say that lot 31, it may not have enough, uh, uh, dimensions to do anything, in my opinion, is, is not completely true because that's based on an assessor's map, and assessor's maps are not very accurate for dimensions. I'm Fred, I stand on that road like multiple times every week, and the road stops right where that crooked line is right now. There's no road after that, so you can't even get to you can get to the house and then the garage. And then there's no road. It's just dirt. He just drives over land. There's no road down there. There's no right. possible way to do anything without extending the, the LaSalle Drive. Right. But, but to say, looking at the map, that, there, that you're too close to wetlands there or a floodplain is, is to me, is, is, is shouldn't be a final decision maker because that map is not accurate. I can show you numbers of, of cases in town where the assessor's map is not accurate. You're going to need to get a, a deed description or a plot from the owner to show you exactly where the boundaries are and to see no, what that's is that's wetlands. That's and absolutely what true, but I think that there just there are so many issues with that southern lot yeah. between access and wetlands and the fact that he he still works them as fields, if I remember correctly. He does, yeah. So it well, sounds like we agree that the first thing would be to reach out to the yeah. owners of lot twenty. Of twenty eight, yeah. yeah. We don't have to say we're ne we're we're never going to pursue lot thirty one. No, but it sounds like we might at least we through the assessors. I mean, we have this the property card for lot twenty eight. So we have a we have a name. We have a mailing address in Sunderland. Yeah, um, Sunderland. Okay. So that's for nine Lasalle Drive which is the parcel 12-0-28.
So um, maybe we'll yeah. draft you a should, letter. You should drive this. past there at some point and see what it looks like. Yeah. 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 And just saying, in the housing bond bill, there actually is a new um, pool of funding, which I was pleased to hear about today, that will be getting, and this goes for municipally owned land, so I'm getting ahead of myself, but um, basically for site work for our homes, for parcels to be developed for affordable housing. So one of the barriers to the DeMaio site, and certainly to this site, would be there's a tremendous amount of site work that would need to be done. Um in either case. So that is something um, yeah. I'll talk to probably Brian or, or Sylvia about looking into a little bit more as that becomes a reality, because that would be a good sort of first step once we get through um, a little bit more um, development talk, if you get my drift. So Fred, do you want to, um, check in maybe next week about reaching out to them or sending a letter or having Brian send a letter or you as a select board person, I could sort of work on a letter or something, or do you want us to try a phone we'll, call instead? We'll, we'll, we'll communicate about it and figure out what the best course is. Okay, that's fine with me. Okay, super. Ask, what, what are you gonna ask for in a letter? The purpose of the letter? Just, I, I would just make it a, an initial approach, you know, we you uh, we understand you own the piece of property in Waitley. You think it might be appropriate for a housing, I don't want to call it a housing project, but mm -hmm. a project to build housing. Uh, and would you consider uh, tra you know, transferring it? I don't want to say sell and I don't want to say donate. Right. Uh, convey it somehow to the town of Waitley yeah. for yeah for such a project, and we'll see if we hear back. Right, and potentially we could talk about the condition of the property and the risks. Right, they have as property owners of just letting their um <laughs> home or <laughs> what I guess I'm, if you can call it that you know, descend further into blight status. Yeah, Maybe. I mean, it, it, it is a building that should be condemned. It would be dangerous if kids or anyone else went in there, it could fall down. Yeah. As Have a child who's dying bus. to go into that building for some right. unknown reason. I don't <laughs> understand. But anyway, yeah. Okay. Well, um, I'm happy to follow up with you. Is there anything else, you guys? The only other comment I have is that we had a special town meeting last week. Right. Got the transfer of the money from the building stabilization fund to pay for the study on the DeMeo, well, on the highway department in general, right. which will give us information on the DeMeo property. Brian and I and Keith Bardwell will be having a meeting soon. I don't know if it will be before or after the first of the year. Sure. With the consultant. Okay. Good luck. Hold on. I want to make sure I get all those words correct. There's a special town meeting last week um, voted to transfer funds from the stabilization, money from the stabilization fund. B building stabilization. Building stabilization. To, to pay for the study for the highway department, for a new highway department garage. Anywhere, seeing where it could go anywhere. Well, seeing or, where or are they just or, considering that demand? Lo looking in particular at somewhere in the vicinity of its current location and the whether the DeMeo property is suitable or not. Is there a target date for the study? We have, I think we want to have it concluded in six months. I don't have the paperwork in front of me, but we'd like to get moving on it and get it done. But I don't, as I say, I, I don't remember if there's a back end date specified. Okay. G Catherine, are, are you aware of what's going on at the, the exit 35 study? I'm not, I don't have an update on that. I'm not okay. actively talking with anyone in that group. I think Julie 
Julian Wagner is a select board representative on that. Uh, yep. What's happening lately is we've asked, uh, we've got a consultant, was a Berkshire Design Group looking at, at helping us come up with options to develop that property. And lately we're asking for a market analysis of of what's there, I, I guess, and they're focusing now on, on housing, affordable housing at that location. Where uh, is guess, 35? Wh 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 which location in particular? I'm not sure I know which one on exit 35 they're looking at, whether it's okay. the one near the Sugarloaf Shops or is it south of the Tritown Beach? Uh, I don't know if they identify location. They're looking at, at a, I guess, marketing study or analysis to see if it will support uh, housing projects here. I don't know how that came, the, that study came into development for a housing project. A housing study there it was supposed to have been open to any kind of development and it seems I, 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 I haven't been in the meetings but i assume it's just one of the options that they're looking at because they're looking at that whole general area from right but there's more than just from below the there. diner to the town line yeah there's more than just uh, uh, housing opportunities there i would i would say i think there's a yeah i would coming up there is it is it uh tomorrow tomorrow yeah i think tomorrow there's a meeting yeah, coming up on that, uh, and I and I guess if if the committee is looking at at a, for housing opportunities there, shouldn't this housing committee be aware of that or involved in that or, or some input into? I mean, are we going to be told at the end that there's a great opportunity for housing, and yet at the meantime we're looking somewhere else? I I, I don't know. My, my guess is that they will make, when they make recommendations, they will be general, not you can build housing on this lot as much as we, you know, like to integrate some housing into it. And here are some possibilities. N knowing the way these studies report back, they, they tend to be generalized rather than very specific recommendations. Especially for an area like that, where the town doesn't control or own most of the lots and right, right. and wouldn't the emphasis say, be this on commercial be for this. right right i would imagine the emphasis would be on commercial as much as right. possible in that area since it's already very commercially developed on the deerfield side and yeah, our i think it's premature for this group yeah to be involved yeah I suppose it, I could send an email to Ju Julie. Yeah, Julia? yeah, I'll send it, drop a note to Julie. I will. All right. Now I lost my agenda. All right. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I think we we're trying to wrap up anyway. Yep. Um, but I will definitely add that to my to do list. Um, I've got a few other housing things kind of going on this week for myself. So what are you adding to your to-do list? An email to um, and Julia, the select board member who's um, sitting on that the exit 35 committee. Is it That's Juliana? Cool. Juliana Wagoner? Yes. Okay. Is it Juliana, not Julia? I, I have done it's, that. She it goes by Julie, but it, her whole name is Juliana. Got it. Right. Thank you. Okay. And are you just going to ask, what are you going to ask? I'm just going to ask her to keep me in the loop should okay. the direction of any of the talks lead into the foray of affordable housing. Well, Fred, who's doing a DeMaio study? Is that Berkshire Design? No. No, it's uh, well, I, the Fellow's name is Michael Richards. I forget the company name, but it's not Berkshire Design. Local area or? Yeah. Um, okay. I can probably tell you in a minute if I can find it in my email, but it, it it's I know it's not Berkshire Design. And it's not the group that did the housing study. No. Right. Okay. Well, um, 
I'll try to get this out this time. Is there a motion to adjourn? Just a quick uh, yep. our next meeting. Right now I have right. a meeting for us on January 3rd. Is that right? Thank you for reminding me. I tend to forget this. The planning I know. planning board moved their meeting from the end of December to Wednesday oh. the 3rd. Uh oh. So we're meeting, the planning board's meeting on January 3rd from 5 to nominally 7. Right. So, so our meeting would normally be scheduled for 6 30 on January 3rd. Yeah. Um, I have a meeting the following Wednesday. I, um, with how much trouble we had the last time we had to completely reschedule the meeting, I wonder. Um, if it's worth trying to just start at seven and hoping to keep the agenda to an hour or do people want to entertain i don't i haven't even really gotten to january with putting right. things on my calendar to be perfectly honest so i'm a little hesitant to say what i can and can't do that week yeah i, I like the idea of keeping it to an hour and going seven to eight well, well, right. try that I may be a little fried from a long day and then two hours of planning followed by housing, but yeah, I'm not sure. This okay. Seems, okay. What, this what was that date? Work, January, January 3rd. 3rd. I don't, this seems to work good for me on a Monday. Do, do we want to look at, at Monday, January 8th? Instead of the 3rd, if people have having other meetings coming in early January. Um. I'm actually out of town, uh, okay. and I can't promise that I could make a meeting. But just, yeah. I mean, I, I'm with Fred, and that Mondays typically are fine. But you know, Monday the eighth, I just happen to be away. Why don't you just leave it on January third if people okay. can make seven o'clock? Let's just okay. do that. All right. Um, people should be done with their hangovers. Right. Right. Okay. And, oh, and one quick note, Fred, the firm doing the study is Weston and Sampson. Weston hmm. and Sampson, okay. Yep. Thanks for finding that, Fred. Thanks. All right. So I'll then move to adjourn. Nice. Second. All right. <laughs> well, All right. everyone ready in agreement? Super. Yep. Bye. All right. Good night, Bye. all. Good night. Thanks all so right. much. Thank you, coming. Catherine. I'll try to get those website updates. Yeah, I'll let me you know how you make out and follow up with me when, when once you've talked to um, Mr. Ross. Will do. All right. JD. Well, good night, and everyone. Catherine, I'm going to be talking to Brian tomorrow. Excellent. I will feel him out as to what the best contact is for the Super. people on Los Yep. Sounds great. Thanks, Fred. Okay. All right. Good Bye, night, everyone. everyone. Good night. Bye.